I'm going to suture the surgery reel hollow organ stomach model. So this represents the stomach of probably a medium to small breed dog. Uh, again, we can use the surgery reel tensioning base. You can either work with the stomach just on the table itself. Uh, I find that it probably works a little better if you put it in the tensioning base. The best way to use the tensioning base with the stomach is to turn it to the side so we have the tensioning base perpendicular to our body have the greater curvature of the stomach facing your right hand and you can open up the tensioning base and then tighten it down and that will give you access to the tensioning base. So generally speaking as we work on our patients uh, they, they, they will probably be facing something like this so the head would be to the left and the tail would be to the right and the stomach will be in a position such as this because we're working from the side. So first we need to make an incision uh, and in this case it's important when we're making an incision in the stomach to tension the stomach so to tent it up to make the incision because otherwise you cut through both sides. So in this case we pull up and we push straight down into the stomach and you can appreciate the beauty of the stomach is we didn't go through to the other side, we just got to the one side so we, we, we tensioned that, we can then bring the stomach up again with now the thumb forceps in the lumen of the stomach and use the blade to make the incision bigger or we can actually in most cases use a scissors to accomplish that. So we're going to hold this up and then come in with a scissors to make that larger and we can come back the other way. So that will give us the incision in the stomach. We can clean out, explore the stomach, uh, do whatever we need to do and then we're going to close the stomach. Now in the vast majority of our species a single layer closure is effective in closing the stomach. So we can just do a simple continuous through and through suture uh, in order to practice that. The best way to do that I think is to put your thumb forceps inside to stabilize. Go just past the incision in the stomach and make your first suture bite. By going past the incision in this case, it's going to stabilize the stomach a little bit better and make sure that we've got a good closure. To do this, again, we're going to use square knot. Needle holders goes in the middle of the loop, around once, and tightens. Back in the middle, around once, and tighten. In this case, we're going to snug it down until we have the tissue opposing. Back in the middle, around once, and tighten back in the middle around once and tighten. That's four throws. Most of our modern sutures work very well with that. Now in this case it's a great idea to stabilize this with a hemostat. So we can do that. We'll stabilize it to the end and that will help to keep it intact and keep the stomach from moving as much. Now we're going to continue this with a continuous pattern. So because I've started my pattern always when I'm doing a continuous at the far end of the incision and work back towards my body. That gives me the, the, the finest motor movement as well as the, most, the best ability to actually keep a nice even suture line. And I'm going to use the sutures thumb forceps in the middle, about four to two to three millimeters now from the edge of the incision and go through both sides because this is so close together. If this is gapping a lot, I can go through one side and then the other. Most of the time we're going to do an appositional pattern in the stomach. If you're working in a foal, you might consider doing a uh, inverting pattern, but for people and in small animals, the appositional pattern works very well. So the key here, again as we make these, is to make sure our suture bites are evenly spaced from away from the incision and along the incision. And while this stomach model replicates a stomach, it's really just the concept of doing a hollow organ. So bladder, colon, all of those things can be replicated using this particular model. And you can see that the tensioning base makes it really nice to be able to hold all this steady while you're working on your own so that it gives you the ability to do things. Now it's important when you do this to make sure that you don't get the other side. So I put my thumb forceps in here to separate that.
And I think one more suture ought to take care of this. Now maybe two. Got a couple more spaces here to work on. You can see that's coming together nicely, supporting itself. Now this last one you can see is a little more challenging because I'm at the end of the incision. So what I want to do is come back, use the thumb forceps and come just past the incision in order to secure that. Now it's a simple continuous line closure. I'm going to make sure that I've got a, done a nice job tensioning my sutures as I go. Needle holder goes in the middle around once. And I can snug that down back in the middle around once. Tighten that down making sure I open the needle holders each time I close or tie the suture so that I have my little knot equilibrating. And then finally the fourth row of the square knot. Because this is going to be left in the abdomen, I want all of these short. So I'm going to keep them all a couple of millimeters short. And now I can remove my stay suture and take care of that. So it comes together nicely. It should be watertight and, and fluid tight. But what's really fun about this model is that what I can do now is actually come through and see what it looks like on the inside as well. And you can appreciate that these bites were much better as far as evenness than I got a little bit greedy right at the end uh, where I'm getting close to the end of the incision. And, and that was a little bit wider on the inside than it was on the outside. So the nice part about this model is that you can look at both sides to determine the effectiveness of your suture placement.